Hello there guys, it's me Unstable Voltage and welcome to Phantom Doctrine. Phantom Doctrine is an XCOM style turn-based tactical game and it is uh, set in 1983 during the Cold War so there are no aliens in this game, unlike XCOM. Well, I don't know, actually. Maybe there are. Maybe uh, maybe I'm going to get really surprised partway through this game. Uh, Phantom Doctrine is made by Creative Forge Games. They're the same guys that made Hard West. Uh, Hard West being another XCOM style game, one that I never actually played, but I've heard many good things about. Full disclosure, the copy of Phantom Doctrine I am playing was provided for free by the publisher. Uh, but I'm going to be going through and playing this game to see what it's all about. I am going in blind. I have played the tutorial myself once. I've also watched somebody else play the tutorial. There are a few interesting mechanics in this that I really like. The tutorial is actually very quick and relatively basic, so I will allow you to experience that with me. Uh, I'm not sure it's necessarily important to the story, but it does give me a good opportunity to explain some of the interesting mechanics that make it different from games like XCOM. So we're going to go in and start a new game. Um, apparently there's a, an extended version uh, of the, the main storyline, which I don't seem to be able to select, so I, uh, I assume you have to complete it on regular mode first. Three difficulty levels, we've got easy for people who are new to the genre, we've got medium, which is kind of the, the default, even though it defaults too easy for some reason, and then we've got hard. We're going to go and play on medium. And we're going to put the tutorial on. And I'm not going to do Iron Man mode. And obviously we'll keep the subtitles on. Off we go. So you can play as either the CIA or the KGB. Which is essentially what the game's about. You are playing as a member of the CIA against KGB or vice versa. At least that is what I believe. So we're going to play as the CIA. You can pick from male or female. I'm a guy. I'm going to play a guy. Uh, we've got all of these passport photos we can choose from. There's a very good uh, selection for both male and female. Uh, I'm going to pick the same one that I did when I did the tutorial last time, which was that guy there. Uh, let's go ahead and give him a name. David Thompson, that's about as, uh, as straightforward as you can get. And now we actually get to create a 3D avatar for our character. Uh, lots of customization options here. It generally picks a face that is similar to the passport photo, which is quite nice. Um, I'm going to go ahead and change his hair to black because that will match the passport photo a little bit better. I'm not going to spend too much time customizing the guy. I'm not particularly all that bothered. Uh, but I will go in and try and make him a, a little bit more uh, spy-like, maybe. Let's see what we can find. And we just get him like a sort of a plain a safari shirt. That might work. We get him some sort of safari pants, some some cargo pants. Not the all the old tight jeans. That might work there. Looks like he's uh, ready for a mission. You've got lots of things like boots, gloves. Um, you can also give them hats and uh, extra details like scars and tattoos and makeup. But uh, I don't know. I think I think I'm happy uh, with that as is. Now, Deadpan is always your code name if you are playing as the CIA. So let's go ahead and start. You can watch through the intro and then we'll get into the tutorial. Yankee Juliet uniform. Reporting contraband seized. Understood. Break off patrol. Head back to base. Tavarish, HMS Conqueror Narushal Radio Malchani. Sto? Показать расшифровку. А быстрее. Немедленно послать в Москву. Немедленно. We got intel from Vladivostok. It's big, Steve. Langley seen it yet? No. Should they? Hell yeah, but use the network. We don't want anyone listening in. First the British, and now the Americans. Was there anyone else you wanted to involve in our plans? I am handling it, Valhalla. Get out! 
both of you. Your incompetence has exposed us. Now Iceberg is in jeopardy. Doing all of this in the open was your idea. True. It was a simple plan that any fool could have executed. And you failed. Gentlemen, this problem is easily solved. Traitors! Now, now, don't shout. It's bad for your heart. Apologies that during the cutscenes the music can be a little bit uh, overwhelming on top of the voices. Even though there are volume sliders for sound effects, voice and music, when you're watching a cutscene uh, it's just one volume slider so you can't really do anything about those volume levels. Also I've noticed that the voice acting is a little bit of a mixed bag but I guess it is serviceable. So that services the game's intro. We're now going into the tutorial itself. So we've got uh, three objectives here which is to reach the sleeper agent and activate his control phrase, steal the shipping manifests and evacuate on the other side of the border. Let's go. I hope you have a good reason for pulling me off that RAF gig. Absolutely. This operation is crucial to Project Iceberg. Why are you even talking to me? You're taking an awful risk. Nonsense. They may be expecting defectors, but not the kind of hardware you're carrying. Ihre Papiere, bitte. chip indicates the sleeper is in position. Are you familiar with him? Who could forget that handsome face? All of that lovely hardware in the boot and I only get to take the uh, what looks like an AK-47. So I have played through the tutorial before. Like I said, it is quite quick, quite simple, so I'm not going to spend too much time dwelling on it, but I do want to point out some of the mechanics. Uh, so first of all, um, in Phantom Doctrine, it works similar to the way the Firaxis XCOM works in the fact that you have sort of two action points or at least certainly in the tutorial you do represented by these two little blue arrows so you've got your first action and then you've got your second action essentially so you've got like a a walk or a run and a dash you'll also notice this little orange pip here as well this is actually a fire action so there are certain abilities namely ones that uh, involve you doing some sort of damage um, or you know firing a weapon uh, using certain items that actually use the fire pip or sometimes a movement and a fire pip so uh, unlike uh, games like the original XCOM, Xenonauts, Phoenix Point where you've got time units and you've got a lot more option uh, this is more of a sort of a, a two action system so the first thing that we need to do is go and move over here. Now this is currently the infiltration phase. During the infiltration phase, the guards aren't alerted, as it's saying here. So th this is basically going to pop up and, and echo a lot of the things that I've already said. So it's talking about the action points and the fire points. Uh, so while we're in the infiltration um, phase, as long as we don't do anything suspicious, the guards don't care about us. As long as we don't attack anyone, as long as we don't cross one of these red lines and move into what is essentially a, uh, a restricted area, the guards don't care. So we're going to move over here. Again, we're not in a restricted area, so the guards don't care. So we're just going to end the turn, let this guy get out of the way. I sincerely doubt that. Now, from what I've been able to tell, um, guards and units don't have 360 degree vision. They sort of have a cone of vision. And I think, actually, we can probably... If I just left-click on this guy... Or is it just by selecting him? Yeah, if I just mouse over him, you can see those sort of uh, tiles that are highlighting in front of him. That's where he can see. So he can't see what's going on behind him. So we're going to go through this gate and we're going to walk over here in front of this camera. We don't want to go into the camera's line of sight 
because that would set off the alarm. So instead we're going to go through into here and that will allow us to deactivate the camera. So we assume there'll always be one of these near a camera. The security quietly. We don't want unnecessary trouble. Thank you. I can handle myself. So let's end turn. You can't really go wrong on the tutorial because you're basically having to do what the game tells you to do. So let's go ahead and enter the main building. Now we're still in the infiltration phase at this point. Now of course this guy is in the room. But he has his back to us. We can again see that uh, he's he can only see those red tiles. So those tiles are red because um, we are in a restricted area. So if we walk into one of those red tiles, that will set off an alarm. When we have this guy selected, these tiles are white. If we were standing in one of these tiles, this guy wouldn't care. Because this isn't a restricted area. So let's go and walk in where the tutorial is telling us to. So this guy is actually a sleeper agent, and we can basically use this ability down here on the bottom. Control phrase, take control over an enemy agent subject uh, to control, subject to control phrase. So this will actually use one of our um, fire points, and it has a three-turn cooldown. Let's go ahead and confirm. And this guy is now under our control. So because this guy is in the enemy uniform, essentially, he's free to walk around here without getting caught. So we can run up the stairs to this other enemy unit, and that doesn't cause a problem. So we can do a melee takedown. Um, you can take down someone silently, provided their HP is lower than that of the attacker. Well, we've got 90 hit points. If we mouse over this guy, he's only got 35. So we can take him down silently. Again, it will cost a fire point. Now, another thing that that has cost us is this uh, resource called Awareness. So, as it says here, all characters have a certain level of awareness, and it is used by select actions, for example, takedowns. In combat, Awareness allows agents to dodge when shot at, effectively reducing received damage. Awareness regenerates every turn, and it can be raised by abilities and items. So, it's this little bar that's under our health bar. You can see now that it is more than half depleted on this character. So, actually having uh, Awareness means that you are going to take less damage. So... That, that's a very important thing, because one of the mechanics that makes this different from games like XCOM is that there is no chance to hit. Whenever you shoot at someone, or whenever someone shoots at you, the hit is guaranteed. It's actually the only the damage that is affected, and part of that is affected by awareness. Some of it is affected by range and cover and things like that. Let's go ahead and end the turn. Now, we've got a room over here that we can't see into, but we do have this spotter support ability that we can use, so tactical spotter. So we're going to click where we want to spot. Now, you can see there's a line coming from the sort of upper right-hand corner of the screen. That's basically telling us where our spotter is. So our spotter's supposed to be in a building uh, across the street. So we wouldn't be able to see, for example, in something over here because our spotter doesn't have a line of sight. But we can see in through the window. So we're going to go and select this area here and confirm. Is it a right click? Tactical spot. Confirm. Why won't you let me do it? Come on, it's one of these buttons. Okay, let's cancel out and try again. Have I broken it already? That would be pretty impressive if I have. Line of sight blocked. There we go. Wasn't letting me click where I wanted to for some strange reason. Bear in mind, of course, I am playing this a couple of days before release. It is quite possible that what I am playing... Don't worry. I'll clean the mess after you. As I was saying, it is quite possible that the version that I'm playing isn't the final code for the retail version that comes out in a day or two, so there may be the odd bug or something involved there. So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to stack up on this room. We can now see there's two enemy guards in there because we've used the spotter. And we're going to go ahead and put our two guys outside each of the doors. Now that will actually present us with a new option, which is the breach option. So the breach ability... Um, select the march room for attack and confirm. Breach confers a damage bonus, making it extra deadly. So we're going to select breach. 
Uh, nearby agents move into the designated area and shoot any encountered hostiles. Suppress enemy overwatch. Requires at least two agents with firing capacity and right mouse button on enemies to lock targets. So basically we're going to go ahead and click in this room. Uh, we can see that it's going to cost us three ammo and it's going to cost us one fire point. We've got no target locks here. Uh, I'm guessing I'll find out a little bit more about how those targets lock as we go on. But let's hit confirm. So we've walked straight in and killed both of the guys. Now that's actually put us into the combat phase. So we fired a weapon that makes a sound. So one thing that uh, you can do in this game, and again I haven't experienced it yet, but one thing that you are supposed to be able to do is there are certain missions, or maybe all missions, that you can actually complete stealthily by using silent weapons and uh, silent takedowns. So we can also rotate the map around, of course, as you would expect. There's a key to zoom out, but I don't think there's any way to zoom in. You can just hold one button to sort of just bring the zoom back a little bit. Anyway, um, note that using non-suppressed weapons always triggers the alarm status and starts combat. So we'll let the enemy have a turn. So alarm raised, an unsuppressed gun has been fired. So we need to get over there to this safe. We can see that by the uh, icon above it. So we're going to go and grab the documents from the safe. We'll just left click on it over there. And we now need to call the evac. So there's the evac button. Uh, we've only got one choice for an evac zone here, so we'll go ahead and hit confirm. So summon the evacuation vehicle to the selected evac zone rounds until the evac arrives two turns. And now we need to set up an overwatch. So what we're going to do with uh, this is set up the overwatch on Kingfish first. So we'll select his weapon, select overwatch. Now overwatch works a little bit differently in this game to what I've seen in others. So basically you can set the distance that overwatch is effective to. As you can actually see as I move the mouse further away from my character, you can see this little radius growing larger. Now it's a 360 degree zone of fire. Now, if I was to select this tile here, so basically what we're trying to do is we're, we're trying to overwatch against anybody coming in through this open doorway. If I was to set my overwatch here, it wouldn't trigger on someone coming in through the door. If I was to set it there, it wouldn't either. Only setting my overwatch to here puts an orange tile in front of the door and would catch someone coming in. So we can actually, if we want to, reduce the radius of the overwatch so that we, can, we only fire at targets really close to us. What you can do as well, as you can see, you can, the, the radius is quite large, but if we go too far, it ceases to become 360 degrees and turns into a directional cone. So there's a bit of a trade-off. You can either do a close-range 360 degree overwatch, or you can do a longer range cone. Of course, we're going to do what the tutorial tells us to do. We're going to overwatch in front of the door with him. We're going to move the second guy over here towards the window. And we are going to use overwatch to basically overwatch in a cone in this direction. And we will end the turn. So we can see that full cover and half cover is also implemented, much like it is in the Phyrexis XCOM games. First guy comes out. And down he goes. And the second guy comes in through the door. And down he goes too. So now we need to jump out of the window. This will put us in half cover, so you can see these these cover icons. Uh, this is this is actually this is a good good time to demonstrate something that I've heard people asking about other games, particularly in Phoenix Point, uh, about free camera rotation and the reason why um, Firaxis locked it to sort of forty five well ninety degree snaps at this forty five degree angle, and that's because when you put the cover icons. Um, uh, vertically on vertical surfaces like this if you're actually looking from this angle you can't see the icons so by doing everything at 45 degrees you can always see where those cover icons are anyway let's go ahead and get him out on the roof i'm not sure whether or not enemies actually react to sound opening doors smashing windows that kind of thing so for one fire point and one action point, we can use the full auto attack. So you will notice that there are different attacks we can do. So full auto, single and burst. 
Uh, full auto will suppress the enemy, practically moving their awareness. Now, you can see here on this damage indicator, we're going to do a maximum of 84, minimum of 54. He's only got 35 health, so we're going to kill him anyway. That's exactly what it's telling us here. So, Phantom Doctor... I'll just wait till he's finished. Phantom Doctrine has no ranged chance to hit, but attacks can deal varying amounts of damage presented as follows. Maximum damage, and then in brackets, minimum damage. Targets automatically dodge incoming attacks, providing they aren't at point-blank range. Dodging costs awareness. A dodged attack deals minimum damage, else maximum damage. Damage is further reduced by target armor and cover. Note, in infiltration at the beginning of combat, enemy awareness is always zero, except for enemy agents who start with full awareness okay fair enough we are going to move the other guy down and to this truck so out of the window he goes and some weapons are accurate enough to land devastating headshots but cost awareness so we've actually got our sidearm here this little revolver and we can uh target this guy so it's going to cost us a fire point but it's also going to cost us 70 awareness this is going to do 95 damage uh, it's probably a little bit overkill, but here goes. And he is down, so let's end the turn. Did I not click the button? I have some enemies run around, but it won't really be a problem. So here is the extraction vehicle. Now, this is quite an interesting thing. When the evac compromised timer elapses, you will incur a danger penalty upon the conclusion of the mission. Note, however, that it does not affect the mission success or failure. So you can see that we now only have three turns to get everyone to the evac zone. If we don't get there by the three turns, we'll still complete the mission but we'll actually suffer a penalty in the sort of strategic layer of the game. So let's go ahead and get these guys into the extraction area. And there we go. So we can hit the evacuate button. And there we are. That is the first mission of Phantom Doctrine complete. Going to go and hit continue here. We're going to get a new mission. So it doesn't go to the strategic layer just yet. It throws us straight into another mission. Uh, but we're going to do that on the next video. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. Uh, I hope you're going to enjoy Phantom Doctrine. We're going to keep playing through for a bit and see what we get. So I'll see you guys on the next video. And until then, goodbye for now.